Hey guys, why don't you come aboard? Come on. There's a lot of boats in the Bible, isn't there? Do you ever stop to think what happened to the soldiers who crucified Jesus? The Bible doesn't tell us exactly what happened to them, but it's gotta be pretty bad, hasn't it? You know, sin. Doesn't get much, uh, doesn't get much worse than that, probably. I mean, the innocent son of God comes down to earth he shows us how to live a, a godly life. And what do the majority of people do? Uh, they reject him. They criticize him. They try to catch him out by asking him loaded questions. And they've had enough of him eventually, and they demand that the Roman authorities put him to death. They put him to death. The guy who said, turn the other cheek when people harm you. You know, the one who said to look after the widows, the orphans. He spent time taking care of the drunks, the prostitutes, the people who were rejected by society, that guy. So, you know, people in authority talk about leveling up and building back better these days, you know. And there's a lot of talk, but Jesus was the only one who ever did anything about it. And I think God probably wouldn't be happy with the people who torture his son to death unless that same son intervenes for them in that situation. But that's a big if, isn't it? So let's look at a passage from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 15, verse 16 to 32. Then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison. And they clothed him with purple, and they twisted a crown of thorns, and put it on his head, and began to salute him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they struck him on the head with a reed, and spat on him. And bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, cast in lots for them, to determine which every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, the King of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. It's Isaiah 53, 12. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking among themselves with the scribes said, he saved others, himself he can't save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified alongside him reviled him. That's brutal treatment for a criminal. And it's meant to be, it's a deterrent to anyone watching. But it's absolutely terrible for someone who's innocent. And so if that was me or you, you'd feel a, an injustice was done. You'd feel angry, I would. But how does Jesus respond? He doesn't say to them, just you wait till I get you on the other side. Let's look at what he says. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He actually asks God to forgive these guys who had nothing but contempt for him and put him through that shame and that pain. But look how Jesus responds. In the book of Romans, it says that it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. So is there any evidence that those who tortured Jesus and put him to death, is there any evidence that those guys repented? Not really, it's not in the Bible. Although, one of the leaders clearly knew something was different about this day. Because the Roman centurion supervising the whole thing, 
after seeing how Jesus died, he says, surely this was the son of God. The sky went black. There was a massive earthquake, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. The tombs that contained dead people on the hills around, all of a sudden opened up and dead people were raised to life and started walking around. It was a massive supernatural event. The veil in the temple was torn in two, meaning Jesus had made a way for us to be into the presence of the Lord. Whereas beforehand that wasn't possible, now it was. The book of Romans also says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And that's exactly what the centurion did. He hadn't rose again yet, but I believe, I hope that that guy became a Christian that day. And I hope many others did too. See that centurion and those guys watching that, and the guys putting him to death, they would have done that many times. They would have seen hundreds, if not thousands of deaths. They'd be no stranger to that. But this time it was different. See, centurions were some of the toughest men in the world at that time. But again, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance, that breaks those hard hearts, those tough men and tough women. It's the goodness of God that breaks that stubbornness and that hard shell. Yeah, some people need to hear a hellfire message and that God is the almighty God and he's gonna judge the world one day. It's all true. But it's that goodness of God that just touches people in a way that he can't explain and no other way can do it. And if that soldier, and hopefully others too, could be saved on that day, even after what they did, then don't tell me that you also can't be saved. You cannot think that what you've done is so bad that it would keep you from God's love. And God is love. And God wants to save you. And Jesus Christ is interceding for you right now. And if you open your heart and you believe that, you can receive Jesus Christ today and you can receive a new life. You can be born again. You don't need a priest or to join some religious organization. You don't need a Pope. You don't need me. You just need God in the form of Jesus Christ. When you cry out to him, he'll hear you wherever you are. Just believe. You don't have to perform. And yes, you should repent, which means turn from your old ways, turn your life around, but you're not alone. God will help you to do that. He'll send his Holy Spirit to guide you, to instruct you, to lead you gently in the way that you should go. We're all a work in progress. I, I'm still trying to get better, you know, and uh, but not striving, I'm not striving to get better. But I'm a work in progress, you know. In Romans it says that we'll be transformed by the renewing of our mind and it's a constant thing, you know. We're all a work in progress. But if you fall off the bike, you know, you don't just quit. You get back on and you try again. And eventually you get better at it, you know. Don't give up. You will fail at some point. We all do. And when the enemy comes to beat you up, when that happens, when it does happen, when the enemy comes to beat you up, don't listen to him. Don't listen to what he says in condemnation. In Romans, again, it says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's Romans 8, chapter 1. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Am I saying we go around sinning all the time? No. But we don't beat ourselves up. When we mess up, we just get back up and we try again. And God knows where we're at and he'll help us and he'll work with us. And I know there's some of you Christians out there who probably think I'm out of order and that the centurion, there's no evidence that he was born again. That's fair enough. You can get right with God, doesn't matter what you've done. It's only what Jesus has done. That's what makes us pure. Not what I do. It's what Jesus did. And yes, you should get into a fellowship with other believers. It's massively important. But ask for wisdom. A lot of churches are behaving in, in ways that conform with this world, which is passing away. Jesus was peaceful and he was forgiven, but he wasn't woke. And there's a time for judgment on the earth to come. 
For those in Christ it will be a time of unimaginable joy. But for those without, it won't be. It will be absolutely terrible. Worse than you can imagine. And a lot of people are going to think that they're fine with God. But when they come to that day before Him, they'll find out that they're not. Likewise, a lot of people think that they're not worthy and they're, they're ashamed, you know, and, and, and God's going to look favourably on those people. God knows the motives and the hearts of his creation. If I can help you understand something, hit me up, ask me a question in the comments, whatever you like. I'm here to help, I'm not here for any other reason. I've got no other motives. I'm not trying to monetize the channel, I'm not trying to be famous you know I'm doing the opposite to what the world would describe as uh, being popular but it's not about me the only way to get to God the Father is through his son Jesus Christ not some TV preacher there's the way there's the truth and the life Jesus Christ be blessed